Hi everyone, once again welcome to this uh, class, um, uh, we are continuing our, uh, our class on the, um, the programming class, um, today we will continue our discussion on the Python, we were looking at several things basically like a lot of basic constructs, a lot of data structures, we looked at um, uh, several things and in fact in the last lecture. Um, we also did some of the file IOs, uh, how to open a file, how to read a file, how to close a file, how to actually write into a file, things like that. We saw all the details uh, regarding um, how to use them. We also did a lot of uh, functions, uh, the built in functions essentially, and then um, we also kind of understood uh, some of the concepts with underscore, then the name underscore. Um, that is again another built in. Uh, um, uh, functions that uh, we can call into. Um, also, in the last class, we talked about a lot of um, these um, importing um, uh, Python scripts from some other location. How do we import them? Um, how do we re import a whole bunch of uh, uh, scripts, bunch of functions? And then, uh, how do we actually uh, use only a few of them? Things like that. We we saw saw like several uh, options that are available in the Python language to support that. So today we will uh, shift our gears actually we will be covering couple of chapters, uh, the first chapter is going to be just on the, um, the, um, the documentation, we will talk about the comments, uh, the DIR the, the directory and then the documentation strings, what are the different things that we can do here. Um, and then we will also like look at some of the object oriented functions that are available in Python, uh, this is mainly the class and the class libraries, this is something that uh, we will go through, okay. So um, without um, um, a lot of uh, other intro let me go to the comments stream. So comments uh, we actually saw this much earlier probably in the first class, uh, anything after a hash uh, character um, is a comment, this can be um, uh, basically on a line uh, or at the beginning of the line wherever you put the hash and then type in something else that is treated as a comment. Uh, so nothing special about it I mean uh, so um, you can write comments everywhere in fact I urge you to write comments a uh, lot of comments in your script so that it, uh, it it becomes readable for the next person who will support this uh, these things. The DIR function essentially like I mean it prints out all the attributes of an object. So this object and attributes actually like we will study later when we talk about the class and the class libraries, but just think about like I mean if you have some objects uh, we can just um, use DIR to report all its um, attributes. So for example here we are importing uh, sys um, basically this is again the import functions that we um, studied in the last lecture. And then when we say like a DIR SYS, it prints out all the various um, attributes for this sys, for example underscore display hook, underscore, underscore doc, underscore except hook, underscore, underscore name, HDR, error, all those different uh, functions that are there that, that are all like um, displayed in this one. Um, and then if you specify DIR as, um, um, as a square bracket instead of this, this and then basically there is a list, so here it displays the attributes for the list which is add, class, contains, append, count, extend, index etc. So all the list attributes are displayed when you say like DIR. Uh, list the square brackets denotes that it is a list. Now comes the doc strings. Um, the doc strings are nothing but documentation strings, um, which are essentially uh, um, 
used as a documentation uh, when uh, we write out functions essentially. So strings at the top of the uh, module files, um, or the top of functions and top of classes can all become doc strings which are automatically inserted uh, into the underscore doc underscore attribute of the object. So and then we can use uh, regular single or double quotes to delimit the string or uh, we can also use uh, triple quotes for multi users multi line string. So um, these are all like I mean the standard ones so that we saw. Um, Need to get to this. Okay, so um, here as an example, um, we have a, um, a function here which is uh, basically some x y. This we know, like I mean, how to define the function with the column. Um, usually, we only put this. Um, the statement where we just return x plus y, um, but in this case we will just add this um, this string here with the quotes. This function just adds two numbers, and this becomes the doc string for this particular function. So when we say like print sum dot underscore doc underscore, it prints just the doc string, which is essentially like its attribute. So this is the way to that that we can specify um, the doc string. Now um, there is all, there are also like doc strings available for built-in objects. Um, for example, we can print these doc strings for built-in token objects by just um, using the relevant uh, underscore doc underscore. For example, if we import sys, we can do print sys underscore uh, sys dot underscore doc underscore. So um, this is something that is useful. So um, I think uh, you can find out what this prints out. Now there is also a tool called PyDoc. The PyDoc is a tool that can extract the doc strings and display them nicely, um, either via the help command or via GUI or HTML interface. So um, you can do like help list and then basically it will print out uh, all those uh, different uh, doc strings. And then for uh, any of the documentation you can just go to the web and then search on um, www.python.org and you can get a lot of information from this uh, website. Now um, we will go into the, the next uh, topic. Which is essentially the classes, and this is one of the big topics that um, we will be talking about uh, today. Um, um, mainly, like I mean, we will we will first uh, do an introduction to the classes. What are classes, and we'll talk about um, um, how do we um, um, how can we uh, do the what 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 does it mean to actually um, have a class okay and this is again like I mean as I mentioned basically this is the object oriented uh, functions so um, um, so we will talk about that and then uh, we will also uh, once we so we will introduce to the classes and then we'll talk about stuff and uh, junk okay. So um, the class is essentially it's a user defined data type it contains um, certain member data which we will define what it is it also has associated things that it can do 
called member functions. So any time a class is defined, it should have a member data and member functions. If a class is a specialization or a subtype of a more general class, it is said to inherit from that class. Um, and this is this can give a class access to the parents class member both data and functions. So um, these are all the concepts essentially like I mean in the object oriented um, um, functions. Um, first one is class. So class as we saw it is basically it is a user defined data type. The class will have some member functions. And member data. Now, a class can also have what are called subclasses, which are nothing but specialized classes. And these subclasses, once you have, they, they can inherit this the member function and member data plus its own its its own specialized functions and specialized data. So this is the way to that you can uh, actually look into what the classes and how the um, various uh, functions are uh, functions can be defined. So the the member function and the member data that the subclass um, gets from its parent class that is called the inheritance or this is basically an inherited class it is also called an inherited class and these pretty much um, uh, these uh, terminologies are all pretty much uh, same as say the C++ Java etc these are all like general concepts in other languages as well. The classes are built into Python from the very beginning we, we actually like to use this term class uh, many times before. Um, I hope you remember those things um, even though we didn't never talked about the object oriented programming itself and um, the object oriented programming basically um, that is the programming with using all these classes and the members uh, member functions and member data the Python is superior um, to Perl in this sense okay so this is something that uh, you may want to keep in mind. Perl 5 is also object oriented which, which has all these things but Perl was developed as a non object oriented from the beginning so it, it may not have all these things um, whereas Python has all the all the things that are um, already there. Now how do we define a class the class is defined by two things one is the class name and um, a, a suite of code essentially or you can also define it as class class name with the base classes and then a suite of code. The class definition suite or the code block can contain member function definitions so you can define all the member functions within this. What this means is basically like whenever you define a data they can only they are restricted to these member functions and the, the member data. The base classes go would contain any class that this class inherits from. Okay. Now, what is the member data scope or scope of the member data? The class attributes that is the member data. Define the class definition itself are common to the class. So the code block in the class definition actually runs the first time the, the class definition is encountered, and uh, not when the class objects are just instantiated. So this is another thing that um, um, you may want to keep in mind. So when the class objects are instantiated, the code block does not get to run. It only like um, uh, it runs. When the first time the class definition is encountered, the class attributes defined for a specific object, uh, object of a certain class, are held only with that particular object. Often set using the self keyword 
so we will see an example uh, later uh, but again so this is basically um, once you define a specific object it only has uh, it is held only with that particular object so when you go into another object or when you start defining the object this property will also all, all, already be gone so here is an example here we define a class called student the student has various attributes one is the course which is we define as uh, m3412 and then we define several uh, functions so first one is the underscore init underscore so here we give like self name test1 equal to 0 and test2 equal to 0 some initial values so self name is the name uh, that we assign self test1 is just called test1 some arbitrary function or self test2 is also another test2 now we can say like okay what is the compute average of self and then basically that will return basically it will add like test 1 plus test 2 uh, divided by 2 and then it uh, gives you the, that average and then print data is essentially like I mean so you can ask it to print the grade for this particular course in um, this um, or grade for a particular name in this particular course is some the average of uh, or the complete average of uh, test 1 and test 2. So if you have like multiple students essentially like so you can say like David is a student with attribute David as his name 90 and 100 whereas Bob is a student um, like the base class basically as a student class Bob the name and his test 1 and test 2 scores. So now we can say like David print data and then it will print um, the grade for David in M3412 is 95. Zero percent. So it takes this compute the average and reports it. And for same thing for Bob in M three three four one two is seventy point zero. So the Dave dot print dot Dave dot print underscore data and Bob um, dot print dot data both of them generate uh, these kind of uh, results. So some more comments on the uh, student example the calling a function with the same name as the name of the class treats an object of that class. I mean sorry create that object of the, of the class the actual function is called uh, called is the underscore init underscore function within that particular class underscore init underscore is also known as the class constructor so whenever we talk about um, object oriented programming there are two things that you need to understand one is what is called a constructor and then the other one is called the destructor. So the destructor will come in the later on stage um, and each time a constructor is called a different object of that type is created. These different objects will generally have different member data. So one thing if you had noticed in the previous example basically the course name was just held constant it was the chem 3412 uh, class but um, however the, the test the two test grades are specific to each student. So the self keyword has the same role as this in C++ or Java it points to a specific instance of 
that class. It is automatically supplied as the first argument to any class member. So it is automatically supplied as the first class member, uh, first argument to any class member function. And it must be uh, used when referring to any member data uh, or function of a particular class. Even if the member's data, uh, even if it is member's data shared among all the instances of the class. Okay. So now we come to what is known as the operator overloading. This is again another important concept essentially where you can uh, use the pre existing functions and then overload them so that to suit your own customized uh, needs. So for example some certain operators like equal to double equal to plus minus multiplication can be overloaded to work on a user defined data type as well as a built in uh, data types like integers. So today if you if uh, to test if two objects are the same if they are integers we typically use the equal equal function on that operator. Um, but in if you are a user defined data type and then if you want to compare those two user defined, uh, defined data types see whether they match we can overload the, the equal to operator and implement a function which can compare the two instances of uh, the user defined data type. So this is done by actually defining underscore eq underscore function for the class and uh, let us see the example. So here we define a class called point and then the point has um, in its uh, underscore in its underscore um, basically it is uh, the self x is equal to 0 y equal to 0 and then basically it returns self dot x and self dot y. Now we can also define the equal to uh, testing and basically in this uh, underscore equal to underscore it is with self and other and then so we just basically say that return self dot x equal to other dot x and self dot y equal to the other dot y. So um, it basically does this testing and then this uh, reports the answer. So here there is a caveat I mean that we will talk about so a equal to point nothing and then b equal to point one one and then now it will print uh, a equal to b. So one thing that we have to do whenever we do the comparison uh, we need to actually make sure that um, they are the two objects that are being compared are of the same type. So we could be a little safer and make sure that the comparison is actually between the two objects of the same type and otherwise return a flag indicating that the comparison is not um, implemented by our point class. So if that is the case then how do we do it. So here we just say basically if not is instance other point return not implemented else return self x equal to other x and self y equal to other y. So we can take the same functions and then basically like in close within this if then else or if else um, to basically like test for um, um, whether the comparison is between the two objects of the same type or not. Now we do not have to stop at uh, overloading the uh, equal to sign um, we can also overload other um, operators comparison operators 
like less than the underscore lt underscore that is x the x less than y or um, um, underscore le underscore which is uh, essentially stands for less than or equal to and then same thing for eq which is uh, x equal to y uh, and then any is uh, the non equivalent or non eq which is essentially um, uh, not equal to and then uh, there is a GE and GT, GE stands for the greater than or equal to and then GT stands for this greater than. So all the logical operators um, basically are the testing operators we can overload and then use it. So one thing that um, you may want to note is um, there is no overloading the call signatures themselves. Um, in other languages like C++, you can overload the member functions to behave differently depending on how many arguments are passed to the function. Um, but Python does not work like that. The last function defined with a given name is the one that will be used. So the function itself we cannot overload in Python and then basically um, it just uses the last uh, defined uh, function so it does not use the ones uh, prior to that. So a, a small example again here we have a class A and then uh, we define uh, a method and then we will say like self X but then um, we want to change it we have to just uh, write a new function which is now here def uh, method is self x and y so this just overwrites the previous one and that is how um, we can get it. So now we come to the inheritance essentially we talked about this uh, a couple of slides ago. So um, essentially a, cl a class can inherit from another, another class allowing a class hierarchy if a class A inherits from class B then the class B is uh, the super class of class A and um, state A automatically uh, sorry class A automatically has access to all the member data and the member functions of class B. So this is another thing that uh, we briefly talked about. I just wanted to explain this some more again um, and the class A inherits from class B the class B is the super class of uh, class A and then class A gets all the the goodies from uh, the class B basically all the functions are automatically um, um, access accessible by class A. And if uh, the class A redefines some some member function or member data, which is also present in class B, then the definition in A takes precedence over the class B. So um, it will be range. So um, now let us look at an uh, inheritance example how to do the inheritance. Um, so here we define the class as class 1 uh, and then underscore in it we define as self data equal to 0 and those are the starting conditions and then self dot uh, data is the data self dot data. Now we just print out the self dot data. And then we define a class 2 which is an inherited class of class 1 so see how we linked these two and then when we define a square cell 
we can basically say like uh, self data equal to self data times self data which is essentially like now um, start um, um, the multiplication. So um, one thing to note here is essentially since we define the class 2 as class 1 it gets um, all these things essentially even the print uh, or the display command is also there. So we can specify like A as class 2 with 5 and then we can also specify A dot square as well as A dot display. So A dot square is defined here so this class reference and then a dot display is actually described inside. So the first one is just a member function specific to class two, and then the second function is an inherited member function plus from class one. So we saw like some of the um, the methods. So um, so let's now explore some of the alternative syntax for the method calls. So instead of calling the methods through their objects, we can also call them through their class name. So here is an example. So we define x as this class variable some x some class now we can call the method one as just x dot method one or some class dot method one these both syntax are perfectly legal syntax Now this alternate method may be useful if you need to guarantee that the superclass constructor runs as well as um, the subclass constructor. So here is another example we define the class 2 as a um, inherited class from class 1. And then here we can define like underscore init underscore for self data, and then we can also like just mention class one dot init um, class one dot underscore init dot underscore, which directly refers to the one that is before, and then we put that thing. And then you can say like in insert the class two code here. Yeah. So we can overload an array indexing um, syntax with underscore get item. So how do we do that? We define a class called test it, and then we say like uh, define underscore get item is self n, and then basically the return the self uh, dot data, and then the nth uh, variable. And now, when we wanted to want to use this test it, we can just say like um, a is equal to test it, a dot data equal to jump. So now we we get this um, violation here. Now there are more to the the use the system defined functions. One such is the get attribute and the set attribute. So um, the get attribute these functions uh, catch the attribute references for a class. So the get attribute catches all attempts to get the class attribute. So this is example uh, x dot name etc. And then the set attribute catches all the attempts to set a class attribute. For example, x dot name equal to Bob. 
So we need to be careful with the set attribute because all the instances of uh, the self attribute to value become self underscore attribute underscore and then the value will be the attribute value. And this uh, can prevent one from writing code uh, such as self dot attribute equal to value in the definition of the set attribute. So now, how do we use the set attribute? So, setting the uh, using the underscore SAP or set attribute underscore. So here is one other example. We just say like class some class, and then uh, define underscore set attribute underscore equal to. Um, so this is basically like we capture the initial value, and then when we say like self dot underscore dict underscore attribute equal to value, then it will print uh, the character. And uh, this avoids the syntax like self dot attribute equal to value, which we cannot have in this uh, definition. Now, there's another um, member function underscore str underscore. Which is essentially it is meant to prevent a user friendly representation of the class for printing. And then the other one is the underscore um, REPR underscore that is meant to provide a string which would which could be interpreted as a code for reconstructing and uh, class analysis. So now um, here is one example. So here the class called number. We define the function. Uh, this is basically underscore init underscore self uh, data basically, and then uh, self data equal to data. And then um, we say um, repr self. And then the return the number with the self data. So now, when you see this RPR, essentially um, that's con con uh, constructed as a um, that string is interpreted as a code. So here, when we say this, that is interpreted as a code. So we say a equal to number five, and then we say print a, and then finally, like uh, the number is basically number five. Now I mentioned in the very beginning of this lecture, basically like there are destructors essentially like along with the, that go with the constructor. So now let's look at what is a destructor the underscore del underscore is also known as the destructor which is called automatically whenever an extent an instance is being deleted so um, whenever the the instance get uh, blown off um, either due to capacity limitation or transistor uh, limitation um, so whenever the um, you want to delete something basically the destructor is what is being called and um, essentially um, um, in Python it automatically um, 
does this garbage collection uh, once that instance is being booted. So the garbage collection is basically it's there the space is uh, reclaimed. So I think like I mean you probably have heard about um, there are um, different types of memories. Um, the most common one or basically where all the variables are all kept is um, called the heap. Okay, so um, essentially, like whenever you um, assign a variable um, or assign a value to a variable, essentially, like I mean, some portion of the heap is taken and then the particular value is written there. So when the heap gets filled up, you cannot write anything more into the um, into the disk. So when um, you remove something basically so every time like you allocate uh, or you call the constructor which we saw earlier a portion of the memory is being allocated to this constructor and then that is when like I mean the memory can run out everything is kept as a heap and it will not touch any other other program so basically you know, other layers that we saw earlier the very beginning like I mean also in the, the, the lectures like uh, the programs are kept at one level the operating system is in another level and then there are other um, supervised functions will be kept in another level. So um, whenever a constructor is called basically it gets allocated and allocated and allocated. Now the destructor basically comes automatically and then basically reclaims this memory back into the system and that is the job of the, the destructor. And then Python also normally cleans up the memory used for instance automatically. Um, so it is not necessary to put this in the destructor. So there may be like less necessary uh, than in, uh, for example, C++. So that's uh, pretty much um, what I wanted to cover for today. So we went through like the two important topics one is um, we just um, did some um, the documentation basically like with um, the commands the, the DIR command and then the box strings. Then we went on to talk about the classes for Python. Um, so basically like those are uh, essentially it is a user defined data type um, and um, essentially like it is like any other uh, object oriented uh, language. So it has a member function and uh, member data and then uh, that is for the class and then you can also define subclasses which and you can inherit it uh, it is basically it, it inherits uh, all the properties of the class uh, the original class. So it also inherits the member data and the member functions and then you can add to it some specialized uh, functions and specialized uh, data. And then we went through like some examples of the class and how it works. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much all for today. We will meet and start the CGI programming in the next class. Thank you.